Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is John Sofra. I'm with Kinetics Noise Control. I'm the Director of Sales for North America for our environmental, industrial, and commercial airflow attenuation markets. And today we're gonna to talk about something that's actually very dear to my heart is uh, environmental outdoor noise control. And today we'll specifically be talking about air-cooled chillers. And so what I wanted to do to get things started off right is to uh, show you a short video to get everybody in the mood uh, for looking at this topic and considering the topic. So uh, we'll go ahead and get that started if you can, Becca. So everybody should be able to see my screen. I'm looking at the attendees here. We have a great turnout. This is always a very hot topic. Uh, but to get you in the mood here, you know, noise control uh, for air-cooled chillers or any outdoor mechanical equipment is, is very important these days, uh, especially since more and more people want to be outside and uh, 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 restaurants and community establishments are growing closer and closer together. So as we get started, let's talk about the air-cooled uh, chiller noise control in particularly. Now, a lot of times when there's a noise issue on an air-cooled chiller, uh, people are gonna hear this whining noise. And, and so their first attempt always is to put some kind of custom wrap around the uh, either a horizontal or vertical compressor unit. And that's gonna be their first, their first choice and uh, to try to get rid of that noise, that tonal noise that's there. In fact, they, it, it, very well, it very seldom solves the whole issue. Uh, it takes away that tonal noise, but you're left with additional noise sources. And so when we look at an air-cooled chiller, and you look at the two component noise source of an air-cooled chiller, you're gonna have the mid to high frequency noise, which comes out of the, the compressors here. And, and that's a tonal noise. It's a discrete frequency driven noise. And it's often perceived as sounding louder than it actually is because it is that tonal discrete frequency noise. So a lot of people tend to go after that and try to quiet the system down. Well, once they, they quiet that noise down, maybe with some custom wraps, you're still left with a lot of the upblast noise of the prop fans, which is at the top of the unit. And that can radiate out above and out the side. So it's a component, it's a two noise source system and both need to be addressed. Now, when we look at this full 
systemic or system approach for this, uh, you want to look at some things uh, concerning the site. You want to look at the noise ordinance. You know, very often, anytime there's an air-cooled chiller, uh, is is an, a noise ordinance, does it exist? Uh, if so, how stringent is it? Uh, you know, is it, it, there's a lot of different noise uh, ordinances out there or some places without. And so you have to look at how much can I really uh, quiet this chiller down or do I need to quiet it down to a certain extent? You want to look at the location. Is the chiller up on a roof and a nearby uh, uh, building is that's taller might be an issue? Uh, is it on grade? Is it in a valley up on a hill, et cetera? So you want to look at all that. You also want to look at structural issues. In other words, anything that we're going to approach that you're going to see today, we there's going to be things in there that we got to be concerned structurally. What we want to make sure is that everything we do is externally supported. Nothing touches or is supported by the air-cooled chiller system. Uh, and uh, so we want to look at, at different things there, different materials of construction. You might be in a more industrial area. You might be in a more commercial area. You might want your system powder coated. You might have to look at electrical codes and maintenance for, for access. So these are just some things we want to look at initially. And then to start the game off, it's really, and uh, the design, it's really what required chiller information do we need? You really don't need a lot of information, but you do need some critical information. And one is a schematic drawing of the chiller itself. There's a lot of different types of chillers out there, air-cooled chillers, and, and, and what type do you have? Uh, we want to look at the installation guidelines for service and operating clearances. Of course, the, the, the best solution, the easiest solution, is a solution where we can stay within the, the required clearances for both airflow and maintenance. We can't always do that because a lot of this is retrofit work, and sometimes we have to shoehorn in a solution, and we'll talk about that. Uh, we need basic chiller dimensions, length, width, and height. And is the chiller sitting on a six-inch pad, or or how is it being mounted? Is it on dunnage or is it on grade? We need the airflow, the cubic feet per minute of air uh, from the prop fans. You know, we need to know that total airflow because we're going to design uh, to make sure that we don't impose any any uh, real back pressures upon that. Uh, with our solutions that we show you. And then sound power levels. Uh, you know, we want we need to know where we're going to start, right? The published sound power levels of the unit and maybe at various loading conditions, 25, 50, and 100%. We tend to design for noise levels, assuming the unit's going to operate at 100%, but sometimes it's good to know uh, what it is at 50 or 25, depending uh, whether we can reduce the noise levels enough, and maybe the systems are only going to operate at 50% and a no lower noise level. So just some things we need to know. I have a lot of pictures in here. I'm trying to have m fewer words, so we'll just have discussions. I think uh, save all questions for the end if you can, uh, so we can uh, be able to get through this for everybody. Uh, the sim most simplistic design is when we can put up a simple noise block barrier wall system around an air-cooled chiller. Maybe a new construction and we can actually locate the wall uh, as proper distance away from the air-cooled chiller. And, and that's the most simplistic. And, and, and that often is what we can do. And if you look at this, these are from the inside of that enclosure. You have a noise block panel system. You always have a solid outer shell for sound blocking. You have some acoustic media here. You have a perforated inner shell for sound absorption. So we have a composite sound blocking and sound absorption all working together for the most efficient noise reduction. And then typically when you balance dollar cost versus performance, your four inch thick panels are your most cost effective and balance out the best performance. Now, if we look at a particular uh, example of a project. Here's a site overview where we have an air-cooled chiller. It's new in this area. It's right here. This is a hard-sided uh, block equipment yard. The problem with this is this is one of the main entrances to this school. So if you get dropped off here and you walk into that main entrance, you have to walk by this equipment yard making all kinds of noise. And then also there were second story windows here where a lot of that noise was breaking into. So these were things uh, that needed to be looked at because they were exceeding the noise levels of both just close proximity, but also at the property line. And if you look at this, uh, it, it's a, a 
picture of the beginning of an installation of one of these, what we call a maximum attenuation system, or you can call it the ultimate series. And uh, basically we have a chiller in here making noise. And this is inside where we just looked and you see all the block, the cinder block. And there's actually windows up here on the second story. You don't see them in this view, but we had to put up an enclosure and the enclosure we proposed, which worked quite well, uh, was a combination of noise block panels with a solid outer shell, perforated inner shell. Remember, sound absorption, sound blocking combined. We have an access door, double uh, uh, leaf access door for actually pulling the unit out if you needed to fork it out, or you can actually take it out the top. And then also your acoustic louvers here, 12 inch deep acoustic louvers, allowing airflow in at a very, very low pressure drop, uh, but also giving you uh, noise control at the same time. From the inside of the enclosure, you can see some other components, the noise block panels from the inside. Remember, the outside was solid for sound blocking, but the inside is perforated for sound absorption. So we're getting anywhere we can absorb sound or reduce energy levels of sound, that's what we do. We look at acoustic louvers from the inside, and this is really interesting. From the outside, they were solid blade faces, looked really nice. On the inside, they still look nice, but these blades are all perforated metal. And behind the perforations are insulating media. So that's how acoustic louvers work. We balance the percent open area of these of these openings to make sure the pressure drops really low. Remember, we need the airflow of the unit. That's very important. So we can calculate the back pressure properly. And then also uh, we have the absorption of any noise trying to break out gets absorbed through the perf into the insulated media. We also have something at the top called a noise block pergola. Uh, similar to pergola you might have on your back patio, hanging uh, wind chimes and different things. And 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 uh, so that's what we call it, a pergola. Now these panels are four inch thick and they're perforated both sides. So they kind of work as silencer baffles. If you look at this maximum attenuation system, if you're standing outside the walls of the system at 10 feet, we measured anywhere between 18 to 23 dBA reduction. Remembering that 10 dBA reduction is going to be perceived by the average human as sounding half as loud. So 18 to 23 is very uh, uh, um, uh, noticeable. All right. Now, out the top, of course, with those up blast fans, we have to make sure that we design everything properly to not put any real back pressure against those fans. We have to make sure there's clearance for pulling the fans in case a fan eventually goes and needs to be replaced. Uh, and then we have to look at how much reduction you need. 10 foot from the top of this unit, um, it was we were looking and measuring anywhere between 8 to 10 dBA. So once again, about half as loud. Now the system, total system static pressure, because a lot of people, you know, air-cooled chillers aren't meant to have back pressure against them. Okay, prop fans don't build up a lot of static pressure. So there's a lot of, not a lot of external pressure available. So the key is we have to keep it a very low pressure drop. And we can do that because our acoustic louvers uh, and our routine for our, our uh, pergola baffles are all independently tested. And we have algorithms for those to make sure that the pressure drop is proper. Now we look at from the intake, just upstream of the intake external to the enclosure on the acoustic louvers to just downstream of the up blast fans beyond the pergola baffles of about a tenth of an inch pressure drop. So typically in, in, in applications of these air-cooled chillers, it can take that without degrading the performance or avoiding the warranty of the chiller. Another opportunity is using a very similar system, but looking at an equipment grouping. This is at a hospital. Uh, once again, you have your acoustic louvers, you have your noise block uh, pergola with perforated both sides, and you have your noise block panels. Uh, they were worried about the noise, not just in these through these windows of this grouping. You'll see there's a grouping of dry coolers and condensers in here, but also 23 feet to the left of this was the property line, and they had to meet that property line. I have to mention too that a lot of this is retrofit. Quite a bit of the environmental and these applications are retrofit. Maybe we don't have a noise problem, let's not worry about it now, then in the 11th and a half hour, they do have a problem. So just something to consider. If you look inside this same enclosure, you can see there's some air conditioning units, there's some dry coolers. And so it's a grouping of equipment uh, that we went ahead and did a very similar system uh, in here. I guess this was a janitor closet, they weren't 
weren't as concerned with that that window there. But that's just a system. So it doesn't have to be an air-cooled chiller. It can be a grouping of equipment as well. Another thing to look at is when you have a noise block chiller uh, and you're you're worried about noise straight up noise control, but also noise at 90 degrees out the sides uh, that can break out of these fans because these fans are going to make noise and you're going to have a V-shaped uh, uh, kind of noise pattern and really almost 90 degree out the sides. And so what this is, is a noise block stack, uh, chiller stack. The outer perimeter here is a solid outer shell with perforated inner shell. And then each of these baffles that are splayed or, or divided they're dividing little bays of uh, two fans each. Those are perforated both sides. So really all the surfaces, all surfaces we can possibly make perforated for sound absorption are, and then any noise that's breaking through, that's the solid, uh, the solid surface. These are all also, you'll notice there's an independent support frame here. None of this ever touches the air-cooled chiller. All right, and that's very important. Make sure on all your jobs, none of these things touch your chiller because your chiller is not designed to pick the loads once the wind hits this and different things happen or the vertical weight load. They're not meant to take that. So everything's designed separately. And at Kinetics, it's really nice because we have our own structural team in house since we're heavy in the vibration and seismic and wind restraint. So we do all these uh, different systems. And here's just a sample of the previous page, a support system uh, that is separate, all bolt together in the field to then go ahead and uh, mount your panels and your pergola or your uh, dividing baffles in there. Another one can be just looking out the side noise. These are a bunch of condensers up on a roof, crack units. There was about 42 of them on this roof and the neighbors were complaining. So what happened was, is we put, we used our noise block panels here, but there's no pergola or dividing panels in there. We don't need it because we were worried this is a two-story building. We were only worried about the noise uh, I'm sorry, it was a one-story building. We were only worried about the noise over the edge of the building, nothing upward we were not concerned with. So there's a lot of different ways we can uh, design systems. Once again, an independently supported uh, frame system. And when you look at these, I mentioned that there were, um, uh, you know, a lot of this is retrofit. The money's not planned. Uh, maybe uh, a, a neighbor is complaining. Maybe there's a noise ordinance issue. Uh, maybe there's a potential citation. So there's different things that can happen. So in this case, uh, it was at a church and they really didn't have a lot of money, but they needed to do something. Well, Kinetics manufactures both rigid products like the noise block panels, but also our soft goods goods like these curtains that are composite outdoor curtains. They have a mass loaded vinyl, one to two pound per square foot mass loaded vinyl, sandwiched between two layers of this quilt you see here, all suitable for outdoors. That was actually the extended plenum above the uh, condenser, the air-cooled chiller, and then the pergola baffles. So it was able to reduce the price a little bit uh, for them. So there's a lot of ways you can design this to fit this uh, unplanned budget issue. Another opportunity you can look at is what if we're only worried about upblast noise? If you look at these, these are at a resort area, and if you look at these uh, rooms here, they all have balconies. Well, when you look down from the balcony, you see this. And what was happening here was people would come here one year. The next year they would come and say, oh, I don't want a room on the side that overlooks the equipment yard. And it's because it was too noisy when you come out on the balconies or if you try to keep your doors open. So what we applied there was a pergola itself. We weren't worried about noise breaking side to side. We were worried about just noise breaking upward. So we oversized this system beyond the footprint of the unit. We make sure there's enough clearance here and we determine the height of this and any back pressure issues and system effect pressure drops. And then we also line these walls with an absorptive material. But that's just, there's a lot of ways uh, people say there's nothing we can do about it. Well, I've just showed you a few ways that you can control the noise of an air-cooled chiller. If we look at this pergola, this uplats noise control, the, I mentioned before, the design balances the total chiller airflow, CFM, any back pressures, and then also required noise reduction. So this height here of these baffles can vary at times. The thickness of the baffles typically stay constant. 
Sometimes we can change the percent open area. It all depends on how far the distance is between the air-cooled chiller and the bottom of the baffles. Now, the important thing is there is a limitation. We can't get too close here, this clearance here, this dimension. You can't get too close because you'll have an adverse effect on the fans. You'll have a system effect pressure drop beyond the uh, additional pressure drop of the percent open area. We also have to be careful because if one of these fans was to uh, fail and they need to pull it and replace it, we need to make sure they can do that without removing the system. So this, uh, this spacing in here often is about two feet from the top of the fan to the bottom of the unit here. Sometimes it can be three or four feet depending on the system. Here's another retrofit application, and you can see we have all things considered. Uh, we had an open wall here, a little equipment yard with an air-cooled chiller in there. We actually had to worry about the people over here. Uh, so the upblast noise was important, so we put a chiller stack on there. We also had to worry about the people over here at this apartment complex, so we sealed this off with an access door, sealed it off with our noise block uh, barrier wall panels with a perforated inner shell, and then we'll talk about something later called KMP absorbers to soften the reflectivity of this, this uh, equipment yard. And that's what we'll talk about now. So if we talk about equipment yards, uh, chillers are often placed in equipment yards, right? Constructed of hard cinder block walls. We've already seen that. Well, the problem with those walls, and as we show here, the noise starts to bounce around, bounce around, and it actually magnifies, and it also redirects the sound. So, you know, those are all adverse effects. You know, you end up with noise levels greater than what it is just for this in more of a free field situation or hemispherical situation, but also uh, you have the up and over effect where you have reflectivity, and maybe now you have a noise problem over here, over here, or over here, et cetera or for sure over here. So let's put a cinder block wall around it. Hey, it's great for visual, but and maybe security, but it's not gonna be soft enough to control the noise. Here's an example of it, an, an exact example here where we had air-cooled chillers in here. This was for a school down in Florida. We had four air-cooled chillers in here. Uh, hey, it was great, um, they're, they're, they're making their ice. The problem is they make ice at night and uh, and so they're making all this noise at night. So uh, they needed to be 55 dBA during the nighttime, and hence they were running 69 dBA at this residence here at the, in the middle of the night. And, and that's quite, quite noisy. So uh, what we looked at, these walls are all 14 foot tall cinder blocks. We even have the wall of this building. And so we had to soften this in here. Once again, it's a school. It's retrofit. I think this was an issue for about two years before they actually had to act on it. Uh, and um, so, because this, this neighbor issue did not go away and I don't blame them. So when you look at this before any noise control was imposed or applied, you can see all the hard surfaces, 14 foot walls, just a lot going on here. The neighbor is beyond this wall here. What was proposed was a, we wanted to soften the walls, so we didn't need the mass-loaded vinyl sandwiched between two layers of quilt. We really only needed quilt, uh, which was the most cost-effective way to solve this. Not the only way, but the most cost-effective way. And what we found was that instead of pressure-treated furring strips behind the quilt, they actually used metal strips, uh, metal studs, fastened those to the cinder block wall, then they ran, there were factory installed grommets through the quilt, all right, uh, factory installed grommets, and then they were able to use lag screws and fender washers for a very easy and quick installation. And after that was done, you can see here uh, on, on what it looked like. Uh, it was cost effective, it reduced the noise levels to where they wanted, the problem went away. Uh, and everybody was happy. You can even see here the building was lined uh, with that, that, and it was actually slightly taller than this 14-foot wall. Now, where the gate was, there was a little leakage here. We used mass-loaded vinyl sandwich between quilt there because for the gate, we wanted to block noise as well as, as absorb. But we weren't worried about this leakage as much because it was in the direction of the school, and the school wasn't having the problem. Another way to soften those equipment yard walls in more of a planned or new construction, or if money allows for it in a retrofit application, is to use our rigid perforated panel. 
and that is mounted flush mounted or offset mounted from the wall here it's flush mounted and it's really a powder coated finish and it can be mounted to the walls to once again soften reduce the reverberations uh, within that space so they don't bounce around and magnify instead they reduce and you can also use that in general for multi equipment types in one big mechanical yard and this is a particular one in, in las vegas uh, and uh, there's a huge mechanical yard, many pumps, many pump houses, just a huge issue. And that was lined all here. You can see those rigid perforated panels. They don't have any solid back on them because they're going against a solid substrate. Uh, and you can see it here too. So it's just a matter of, of uh, you know, the quilt, could we use the quilt there? Yeah, it would look kind of neat, but but you see it more here. Whereas the one for the, the school, you didn't see much. Whereas here, you see this more, especially from the high rise of the, of the resort. So one thing left, we talked about it in the beginning. We talked about the custom fit wraps. There's nothing wrong with custom fit wraps, okay? They take care of the tonal noise, the one, the function of one item of, of the noise of the chiller. Uh, so that is needed. What you look at though, is there's some custom fit wraps with special clasps and, and, and straps and all kinds of things. And they look great when they're installed. The problem is, is when this needs to be maintained and it's taken off, it, 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 it's very hard to get back together. And often we'll come back to sites and we'll find out, hey, the noise, it's making noise again. And we find out somebody serviced it and never put this multi-piece item back in place and zipped up all the pieces. So what Kinetics did was we came out with what we would consider what would make this much easier, okay? Why would people want to, when they need access, what would make them feel like the pieces and parts should just naturally go back together, almost like you want to put it back together? So what we did was we made, instead of a close fitting system we look at more of backing off and making a simple frame system these pieces and parts would all come out uh, and they would be all bolt together all cut to size like an erector set and then on the front here we would put two curtain panels on the top here two curtain panels and on each end a curtain panel and each of those would be fastened on with fender washers and wing nuts and things like that so on that school system that I showed you with the 14 foot walls and the quilt, we actually used these quiet, uh, uh, quiet shields, kinetics noise block quiet shields to quiet those compressors. And what's really neat is when you can see the quilt back here. So we took care of this, but we needed to take care of that tonal noise as well of these to give us a little more adjustment and fine tuning. So remember, there's no bottom and there's no inside wall here. There's just the top three sides and the front. When they go to service this, they take the wing nuts off and normally the bolts aren't that long. Um, they take the wing nuts off and this whole panel comes off in one piece and it's a two pound per square foot panel. So it comes off in one piece, they lay it down, they service the equipment. Now they put it back up with the grommets lining up and it's in place and ready to go. So it, it almost feels like it should go back. There's no special clasps, there's no wires, ties, and, and nothing like that. Now, if we look at another system and we look at uh, maybe a somebody has a, a chain link fence equipment yard and we have uh, condensers here. And, and in this case, if you look on the other side here, which is right over here, this, area here or this side of this wall about three feet away was the property line and this was a daycare center and the noise levels at the property line were too loud with these two ac units and so as to not affect these units performance wise uh what was neat in this application and i have to preface um what was neat in this application is they have a chain link fence but because they were worried about people stealing copper lines they actually had a, the chain link fence on the top as well and the most important thing was is it required them to tie these columns back to the wall and the reason i say that's extremely important is because i'm going to right now show you that you can put this composite curtain that blocks sound as well as absorbs sound and you can tie and and nylon zip tie that uh it comes out all made to size nylon zip tie that to the chain link fence well understand chain link fence columns are not that strong 
And once you put something that's making it into a, like a wind sail and the wind hits it, it will bend that column over. So you need to make sure that you support the moment arm, the top of this, against something, either a knee bracing on the inside or tying it back to the wall. That's a disclaimer, okay? But this is really a cost-effective way to control the noise when the monies aren't there and you're up against the wall and you're gonna get some very good STC and sound absorption with this. And you can see what I was mentioning. Mass-loaded vinyl, either one pound or two pound per square foot, uh, sandwiched between two layers of quilt. And this was before it was uh, quilted, but we wanted to show you a nice clean system here. And then also it has an outdoor facing. And this shows you some uh, different views of what we have here, remembering those are tied back, or you could use knee braces. So if we look at this, what are the takeaways today? The takeaways are this, there are methods available to treat air-cooled chiller noise, okay? Systems, you can almost call them made-to-order systems by applying standard product. Okay, you have your noise block walls, you have your chiller stacks, you have your pergolas, your quiet shields, your KNP wall absorbers. Uh, oops, I forgot to put the quilt up there. And uh, the proper solution though is a function of noise reduction required, but also you must account, you have to have somebody, you can't just blindly apply stuff. You have to have somebody that knows how the equipment operates and then can apply the noise control product to it. So you got to take in the uh, proper airflow design, structural design, acoustics, and then maintenance access of mo access uh, in most important. So I want to let you know that's what we have there. If you need to find more information, there is information here. Uh, and I don't expect you to write this down, but you can watch, we will post this webinar and you have a general product page for chiller noise. In fact, if you go to this product page for chiller noise, there's all kinds of areas you can dive into. Uh, it's not just one group, one uh, page. Uh, there's a lot of different routes you can take. And then we have a general email for environmental sales at kineticsnoise.com. You have your rep locator. You pick your state. You pick your market, environmental, outdoor. It'll tell you who your rep is. And then our general market page for environmental. So I just want to say, if you have any questions, get in touch with us. Uh, I appreciate you joining. And please let us help, okay? Uh, no system's impossible for us, whether it's up on a roof, on grade, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can help you. All right. So give our reps a call. Uh, give us a call. And uh, we're here to help.